In this video, we'll learn how to combine images and letters together in Inkscape. First, I need to import the image that I want to use, so I'll go to File, Import. For this tutorial, I'll use this image of a panda. You can find a link to this image in the description box below in case you would like to use it to follow along, or you can use a different image. Alright, I'll double click the image, then click OK here. I'll zoom in by holding down the control key and scrolling up the mouse wheel, and I can pan by holding down the mouse wheel and moving the mouse. Okay, next I'll go to the text tool and create a text object over here. Because I'm using a panda image, I'll type a capital P. Feel free to use whatever font you like. I'll go with Roboto. Roboto is a free font and you can find a link to it in the description. Okay, and I'll change the style here to heavy. Alright, now I'll go to the select tool then I'll go down here and change the opacity of the letter to 50%. Next, I'll move the letter onto the image and resize and position it on the panda. I mainly want his ears to be sticking out a bit above the top of the P, and I want some of the inner part of the P here to still be visible. And actually, I want to resize this inner part some. Before I can do this, I need to turn the object into a path by going to Path, Object to Path. And this actually puts the path inside a group, so to get access to the actual path, I need to right click it and choose on group. Now I can go to the node tool, then I can select all the inner nodes here. To resize this part, I'll turn on this button up here to show the transformation handles, then I'll grab this right center handle and drag it to the right some. I'll also grab the top center handle and drag it up some, and if I hold shift, it will do the same on the opposite side. Okay, I think that should be good. Next, I want to hide the parts of the image that are outside of the P. To do this, I'll use a duplicate of the P path to clip the image. So first, I'll go to the Select tool, and to duplicate the path, I can either right-click it and choose Duplicate, or use the shortcut Ctrl D. However, if I use the path like it is to clip the image, it will also clip out the part of the image in the empty space inside the path, and it will clip out the tops of his ears, which I want to keep. So first, I want to fill in the empty space of the path. To do this easily, I can go to Path, Break Apart. This fills in the empty space, but it also gives me a new extra path in the center. I don't really need the extra path, so I can turn these into a single path by going to Path, Union. Next, I want to trace a couple paths around the tops of the panda's ears, then add those paths to the P path. To do this, I'll use the Pin tool. By default, the Pin tool's mode is set to Bezier, which requires that we click and drag to create curves. However, when tracing, I find that it's easier to use B-spline mode here, which creates curves automatically. Alright, so I'll zoom in on the ears, and I want to first click inside the P-path, then trace around the top of the ear. I'll click inside the P-path on this side, then I'll go back to the first point and click it to close the path. Now I'll do the same for the other ear. Alright, now I'll go to the Select tool, I select both of the ear paths and the P path, then turn them into a single path by going to Path, Union. I can now use this path to clip the image by first holding Shift and clicking the image to add it to the selection, then I can right click and choose Set Clip. Okay, and I also want to get rid of the background part of the remaining image. To do this, I'll first go back to the Pin tool and trace around the panda, starting down here outside of the P. I won't worry too much about the parts of the fur that are sticking out. Because the background has already been clipped from the top of the ear, I can just go up around it like this, then back down through here to get the part between the ears, go up around this ear, then through here, and now I can simply click around and down the left side, then around the bottom, and click the first point here to close the path. Okay, now I want to use this new path to clip the image again. So I'll go to the Select tool, hold Shift and click inside here to make sure I select the image and not the P path, then I'll right click and choose Set Clip. However, this replaces the previous clipping path with the new one. In order to clip an already clipped object, we have to first group the clipped object. So I'll press Ctrl Z to undo, and with just the image selected, I'll right click it and choose Group. Now I can hold Shift and select this path again, then right click and choose Set Clip. And now it works correctly. Alright, now I'll bring the panda to the top by clicking this button up here. Next I'll add an inner drop shadow to the P path. To do this I'll first select the path, 
and I'll raise the opacity back up to 100%. If I'm using black, I won't be able to see the shadow, so I'll make it a light gray instead. Now I'll go to Filters, Shadows and Glows, Drop Shadow. If I check Live Preview here, we can see that it gives me a drop shadow around the inside of the P that goes down and to the left some. To get this effect, I have a low blur radius of 3.5, a horizontal offset of negative 3.9, which offsets it slightly to the left, a vertical offset of 3.9, which offsets it slightly down, and the shadow type is set to inner. If I go to the blur color tab up here, I have the color set to black with an alpha of 75, and I have use objects color here unchecked. Feel free to use the same settings I'm using, or try some different ones for a different effect. Alright, I'll click apply and close this out. Finally, for a highlight, I'll duplicate the P path, and I'll make it white. I don't need a shadow on this path, so I'll remove it by going to filters, remove filters. Then I'll zoom in some more, and while holding control to keep it on the horizontal axis, I'll move the path to the left just a bit. Alright, now I'll select the original P path, and duplicate it, then I'll hold shift and select the white path, and go to path, difference, leaving me with just this part. And I'll lower the opacity of this to about 60%. And to make sure the panda is above the highlight path, I'll select the panda and click the raise selection to top button. Okay, that should do it for this video. If you would like to learn much more about things like clipping and masking, be sure to check out the video on the screen. Thanks for watching.